the marriage was fixed, she is a princess, a huge wedding was set up. Everybody in that region, whoever is who and who, who is who of the region, everybody assembled. In India, this is a tradition, the, bri the bridegroom will come with his party. Usually you will see today he will come horse… riding a horse and uh, you know, big… they will show off their… their wealth and their… The bridegroom's people will come in full attire showing off how they're better than the bride's people. But here, Shiva came, dreadlocked, matted hair, smeared from head to toe in ash, wearing the skin of an elephant which has just been slain, fresh skin, bleeding, you know, dripping blood. And he came fully inebriated, completely stoned out, like that. <laughs> and all his people, they're all demented and distorted beings. They're not in human form and they're making some nobody can understand kind of noises among themselves, a language that nobody can understand. And Meera, Parvati's mother, looked at this groom and she again, Omar. <laughs> oh no! And she fainted. Then Parvati went and begged Shiva, for my mother's sake, put on a little better, I don't mind the way you are. I just don't mind how you are. All you want, all I want is you, the way you are. But for my mother's sake, just show a little more pleasant self. He said, okay. And he put on a very beautiful form, attired himself well. And then he came and then the people said he's a Sundar Murti, that means he's the most beautiful human being they'd ever seen. He was nine feet tall. They say when he stood, he was level with the horse's head. This description is there in many scriptures. When he came down south, they said he, he was twice the height of an average woman, generally in South India. Now it's all mixed up, otherwise southern Indian people Women were generally four and a half to five feet, less than five feet. So they said he is twice that of an average woman, that's how they described here. There they said he was level with the horse's head. So approximately nine feet tall man, the most beautiful man and everybody was awestruck by his presence. Then he came and sat down. Marriage is to happen. When marriage is to happen in India, especially in this kind of weddings, the antecedents of the bride and the groom are spoken with great pride, you know, the ancestry, where they come from, how pure their blood is and all that stuff. So for the bride, glorious things were said. Her father is the mountain king and many things were said about her. Now they asked, what about the groom? He simply sat quietly. He said nothing. And there were none of his relatives who could speak any language. All these other creatures who were with him, they made cacophonic noises. Then the groom, the bride's father was disgraced by this, a man without antecedents. How will he marry my daughter? Nobody knows where he comes from, who his parents are, what is his lineage. How can I give my daughter to this man? He rose up in anger. Then there was a sage, Narada, who had a single stringed instrument called Ektara. He just in tang, tang, tang. The king got even more angry. What are you doing Ektara for? <laughs> Narada said, this is his antecedents. He has no father, he has no mother. Then what's his basis? Tang! <laughs> his basis is sound, reverberation. He is just born out of a reverberation. He has no parentage, no antecedents, no lineage. Then the king was freaking, but the wedding happened. <laughs>